My name's John, welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I've got plenty going on. I've got some machining, I do some work for myself. I make a, make a four jaw self and chuck. I do the back plate for that, get that mounted under the Harrison lathe. It's been lying here for a year and a half and I just haven't even had time to, to look at it. Uh, there's some nice VR mail kit comes in. Deb comes in and she does the draw for the bearing scraper that we had last week. She's also got on one of my new Twaston Engineering t-shirts. They are now available to buy from Teespring. I'll put a link in the little description box on the bottom of the video. If you want a t-shirt, you just follow the link and buy one. Uh, the sale of these t-shirts directly helps me run the shop. It's also going to help us hopefully get to America next year for the YouTube bash. Hi everybody, I hope you're all well once again. John's got a, a giveaway and this is a bear and scraper. I believe him. And this, as always, is our hat for our drawers. So here we go. There we are. And it is, oh, a William. William Hogan. Right, also, John's got a new t shirt out. It's Trusted Engineering one which is on sale. It's in grey. It looks good. Thanks very much for that, Deb. Uh, you certainly... The t-shirt certainly fits you better than it fits me, shall I say. But basically, I'd better not say anymore. Anyway, if you do want a t-shirt, just follow the link in the description box and that'll take you to uh, the T-Spring site and you can, you can get one from there. Congratulations to William Hogan. You've won that bear scraper. That'll be in the post this week. Very well done. I hope you enjoy using it. I was contacted uh, two or three weeks ago by a company called 3M. 3M are a massive company. They do abrasives, paints, PPE gear. And what they were looking for, they actually sent us a little package with some PPE gear in. Obviously they want us to use this in the shop so it gets a little bit of advertising for them I suppose. But it's also a nice thought that they did actually contact me and they've sent some, some gear out. What they've sent is a pair of earmuffs, simple enough. Now they're going to be very good. I'm going to give them to Deb. So when I'm using that horizontal mill machine, she can wear these in the house. <laughs> anyway, I wish I had earmuffs like that when I was playing with jet engines. Then perhaps I could hear a lot better now. They also sent us a pair of safety specs. I'm not the greatest safety person in the world but I do think eye protection is really a must. They really are nice are a good fit they've got a nice they're comfortable and they've got a nice cushion feel totally suited on your eyes. The only trouble with these is I can't see because I've got to wear prescription glasses underneath. I'm going to contact 3M and see if they actually do these in a plus two plus two lens they're no good wearing like that. But if these were available in a plus two lens, they'd be great for me to wear in the shop and at work. I bought this four jaw self and chuck about a year ago. I've just never had time to get it installed on the lathe. Uh, I haven't got much on this week, so I think I'll spend a little bit of time and see if I can get this chuck back plate machines ready to take this chuck. It's an HBM chuck, an import chuck. I've used them before, I had a one on the coat test, I banned them, a three jaw self and chuck, and it was perfectly alright, it was fine. It's got a maximum RPM rating of 2500, the lathe's just 2000, so it's within the speed rating. It's held on by four bolts from the front, so it's quite easy to, really quite easy to install. One thing I would recommend when you buy one of these chucks, take it to part. First thing I'll do is remove that. You can leave it on if you wish. It's to stop you leaving the chuck key in the chuck. It's something you only do once. I don't want that. Take the chuck apart and give it a good wash out. Just to get any swarf out because there'll be swarf left in it. It does come with both sets of jaws as well, both internal and external.
I think I found well worth doing as well if you get a decent wire brush on a grinder and just give it a gentle rub just to flash all these edges off for some sharp edges where they've been ground just takes the roughness off and makes it a lot smoother to operate you can see but there's bits of there's bits of dirt and bits of crap stuck on the screw this would be a good blast with something like WD-40 in an airline just to get all the swarf out I have cheated as well and I've bought a bought a back plate I'm going to make a back plate for it at least make a, a spindle protect that but I have bought a, a cast iron L00 back plate you need to make sure that the spindle is clean really clean before we install it Same with the back plate, make sure there's no bits of shite stuck in there. Right, that's well tightened under there. You see the back plate's quite thick, it doesn't need to be that thick. I'll probably machine it down until it's not quite touching the end of the little spindle. The machine a recess on it, and then we're going to drill on top for the four secure bolts. This is cast iron so it'll machine quite easy. The only trouble is cast iron is very dirty stuff. I've got the laser running fairly slow and I'm going to take quite a big cut just so I haven't got little bits of swarf flying everywhere because it is nasty stuff. With that decently cut from the sow. Lock the carriage up. I'm going to start the machine to register now and I'm just going to turn the tool around so it's on a nice new corner.
Registar needs to be 130 mil. At the moment we've got 142. It's a case where you've got to measure, measure twice and cut once. Thirty point three. Thirty point one. Not quite funny as hair. That's, that will go on there. Lock the carriage up. A decent finish. That's warm, not hot, just warm, so it will shrink very slightly. And that's, that, I could knock that onto there, so I think when that cools down, it'll be a pretty good fit. What you can do, after you've gone through all this and you're going to chuck onto the register and you find it's not running through, you can take the register down a little bit and bump the chuck around and just nip the securing bolts up just to lay it up that last that last funny is here but hopefully the truck should run the truck hopefully the truck should run nice and true So I'll leave it in there now, let it cool down. Uh, tomorrow night we'll mount the chuck and bolt it on.